بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على إشرف المرسلين سيدنا ورسولنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers and sisters if I ask you guys question who want to enter Jannah I am sure all of us will say we want to enter Jannah but are we really working toward it? There are so many ways to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enter his Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Jannah easy for us to enter. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed us in so many ahadiths the ways that we, sh we will enter Jannah easily. And inshallah today we're going to be taking some of these ways that will, will enter Jannah, inshallah. The first hadith from Sahih Bukhari that Prophet Sallallahu said that whoever meets Allah without as ascribing anything, without associating anything with Allah Subhanahu to him, will enter Jannah. Which is, shirk is very, very big sin. One, one of the major and the, one of the first major sin. إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء. الله سبحانه وتعالى says that verily Allah will not forgive anyone associated partner with Allah سبحانه وتعالى but He will forgive anything else. It is a shirk. Most of us we think that only associating partners or or gods with Allah سبحانه وتعالى but that's not only true. Anything that we like, anything that we give the value more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shirk also. The second hadith from Sahih Bukhari and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that whoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in his messenger and establish, establishes the prayer and fast in the month of Ramadan it is incumbent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he enters him in Jannah. And this is another hadith that Prophet As, as you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who believe and then they do righteous deeds. Iman, the belief is not enough but by itself. And also we need actions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us actions. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they do righteous deeds. And the next hadith from Sunani Abu Dawood, Prophet Sallallahu said that whoever says, I am pleased with Allah as my Rabb and with Islam as my Deen and with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, as my Prophet, Jannah will be mandatory for him. In Arabic said, وَرَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبًّا وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا وَبِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ نَبِيًّا And inshallah, always we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this. And whoever asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah three times, Jannah will say, O oh Allah, enter him into Jannah. This hadith also from Jami' al-Tirmizi. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Jannah, but we should not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his Jannah. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first, we will ask the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make him happy with us. And of course, if you, if you are, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be happy with you, and he will enter you to his Jannah, inshallah. And also we should always ask, oh Allah, enter us to the Jannah. Allah madkhina al-Jannah. And so many other du'as that meaning the same. And, or you can say in, in, in Arabic, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-Jannah. And the next, next hadith from Jami' al-Tirmizi also, whoever says, Subhanallah al-Azim wa bihamdihi, which is the meaning is, glorified and exalted is Allah the Great, and with his praise, a date palm tree will plant it for him in Jannah. And it is very, inshallah, always, as a good mu'min, we should always engage our tongue with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah al-Azim, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, 
so many other duas, inshallah. Whenever you are coming out from your house, you are entering your car, and you are, if you are doing nothing, just always make the tasbih to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, if you remember, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that, Tubi ila Allah fa inni atubi ila Allah fi al-yawmi akthar min mi'ata marra. Ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I am asking forgiveness from Allah more than 100 times a day. And inshallah, always we should try to ask forgiveness, ask so many other things, and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time in our daily life. And the next hadith from Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 names. 100 minus 1. And whoever remembers 99 names, and whoever believes in their meaning and acts accordingly will enter Jannah. In another hadith said, whoever memorizes. And which is, it's not very difficult to memorize, brothers and sisters. Try to memorize at least every day two, three. Every day two, three. You will see, and it is amazing. Every day try to the, mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 99 names every day with, with your memory. It, you will see so many blessings in your life, inshallah. And also will make you to enter Jannah. And this is the hadith about that. Try to, inshallah, memorize Asma al-Husna, the, meaning, the, the name of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And next hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari. Indeed, truthfulness leads to righteousness, and indeed, righteousness leads to the Jannah. And we should be all, always truthful. Uh, always we, we should be truthful. We should like be very serious to say the truth all the time. And this is the one of the reasons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter us to his Jannah. Next hadith from Sahih Bukhari, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whoever builds a masjid, man bana lillahi masjidan, bana allahu lahu baytan fil jannah. Whoever builds a masjid seeking only by, the, by it, the pleasure of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, Allah will build for him a similar place in jannah. Whenever you see someone trying to fundraise for the masjid, Try to help as much as you can, even one dollar. You have the last one dollar in your pocket, just give that one last, last one dollar. Because as long as the, that masjid is there and that they build it till the day of judgment, inshallah, how many people they pray in that masjid, you will get your reward. And that masjid, the more you be used by the, by the people, by the community, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put in your account many rewards. And inshallah, whenever you see the masjid that gets built, try to help as much as you can, inshallah. And the next hadith from Sunan Ibn Majah said that whoever calls the Adhan for 12 years, Jannah will become mandatory for him. As making Adhan is, is the one of the good things, inshallah. We should try, especially our children, train them how to make Adhan properly. And we should also learn also. But, you know, just some try to make Adhan because this is the, the whoever, Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever calls the Adhan for 12 years, Jannah will be mandatory for that person, inshallah. And whoever repeats after the Mu'adhan, which is the, the, the Mu'adhan mean the caller to prayer from his heart, sincerely will enter Jannah also, inshallah. Whenever you see the Mu'adhan, the making Adhan of called for prayer, try to repeat, inshallah. And next hadith from Sahih Bukhari, who Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, whoever prays the cool, the two cool prayers, which is these two prayers, Asr and Al-Fajr prayer, will go to paradise. Try not to miss it, inshallah. This especially, try to pray in the masjid. Because you're going to get more reward. And brothers and sisters, you know, just especially brothers, for them, coming to the masjid is to pray with the jama'ah is mandatory. But not for the sisters. But because for them, making in the, the prayer in the masjid with the jama'ah, they will get 27 times more reward than they, they pray in their home and try to attend to the masjid. And many of us, we buy the masjids near to the, near to the, the, we buy a house near to the masjid, but 
we cannot beat our shaitan because shaitan does not let us go to the masjid. And we should try, inshallah, at least go, you know, just after we come from work, just go Maghrib and Isha and Fajr, inshallah, try to come and get accumulated more reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. And Allah will prepare for him who goes to the to masjid every morning in the in the and the afternoon, which is for congregational prayer, an honorable place in paradise with good hospitality for what he has done every morning and afternoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him Jannah, which is whenever you have the, the, you you coming to the to the masjid and praying with the jama'ah, at, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter you Jannah, inshallah. Not only 27. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 27 times more than the uh, rewardable in your own house. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you Jannah. Anyone, Sunan ibn Dawood, one of the hadiths mentioned that anyone performs the ablution perfectly. You make your wudu perfectly and then offers two rakah of prayers, concentrating on them with his heart and face. Paradise will necessarily fall to his lot. Which is whenever you make wudu, make two rak'ah sunnah after that, inshallah. And you will enter Jannah. And the next hadith is from Sunan al-Nasai. Prophet وسلم, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said that whoever prays 12 rak'ah in the day and night, a house in Jannah will be built for him. That is, means, brothers and sisters, we have to try to pray our sunnah prayers also. Some of us, we are only concentrating for fart prayers, for obligatory prayers. That's wrong. We should also concentrate our sunnah prayers. According to this hadith, he said, whoever, Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever pray, prays 12 rak'ah in the day and the night, which is two rak'ah before Fajr, sunnah, sunnah, two rak'ah before Fajr, and four rak'ah before Zuhr, and two rak'ah after Zuhr, and two rak'ah after Maghrib, and two rak'ah after Isha, which is altogether 12 rak'ah. And try to not, not miss it if you want to enter Jannah, inshallah. Whoever, Prophet said in the hadith mentioned in Jami at Tirmizi, he said that whoever takes a path in search of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path to Jannah. Brothers and sisters, inshallah, we should try to learn more and more and more and try to gain more knowledge and because that way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter you in the Jannah, inshallah. And we, we should not, you know, just, we should not say, you know, I know everything. We don't know everything. But we should not say that. We should also always Try to read, try to read, try to read. Try to make ourselves knowledgeable person, knowledgeable for our deen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter us to his jannah, inshallah. And also, if you, if you know, you know, just try to memorize Quran, memorize surahs. Still we are, we are seeing many brothers they are, and sisters, they are over 65 and 70. They are praying with three or four uh, surahs. Their, their salah, which is with, with three ends. قُلْ عَوْزُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ قُلْ عَوْزُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدْ إِنَّ أَعْطَيْنَكَ الْكَوْسَرِ All their salah. And they do not want to memorize more. You should, inshallah, try to put every one month, every sec two months, every three months, at least one surah in your portfolio so you can make your salawat with that and memorize more Quran, inshallah. At least 20 or 25 surahs Every normal, every a normal Muslim, Muslim should memorize, inshallah. And so you can enter Jannah because you are gaining knowledge for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make easy for you to enter Jannah. And Prophet sallallahu he said, the hadith mentioned in, in Muslim, I saw um, a man going about in Jannah and enjoying himself as a reward for cutting from the middle of the road, a tree which was causing inconvenience to the to the people. Which is whenever you see, you know, something like that, and that's the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything inconvenience, not only that 
and three and anything you see inconvenience and uh, this could be nail it could could be ha any harmful object try to remove from the people's road so they can not get any harm we are, because you are doing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter you to the Jannah inshallah because of that and Prophet sallallahu he said that man dhamina li ma bayna lihyayhi wa rijlayhi dhamintu lahu ala Allahi al Jannah it's a very important hadith. Prophet Sallallahu said that whoever can give me guarantee for, from the two things, what is between his two jaw, jaw bones and what is between his two legs, which is his tongue and his private part. I guarantee paradise for him, which is this two, inshallah, the especially tongue. And no, many times we... You know, unwillingly or willingly, we are engaging ourselves with, with committing back, backbiting and with, with using harsh language. We should control our tongue and we should control our private parts so we can enter Jannah easily, inshallah, according to this hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And next hadith from Sunan ibn Majah, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that anyone whose soul leaves his body and he is free of three things, will enter Jannah. What is that three things, brothers and sisters? Arrogance and stealing from the spoil of the war and death, and death, people's death. It's very important, brothers and sisters, please do not, you know, just do not take anybody's, you know, the, the possession in your, in your account. Don't. And if you have a debt, try to, Inshallah, just to repay it. And don't say, you know, just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive if you don't fast enough or if you don't pray enough. But that is his right. But people's right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will not forgive. And don't say, you know, just and in the akhirah, those people, they will be paying arm and leg for those people's right. And we should be very careful in order to, to enter Jannah. We should be away from this, especially arrogancy. Arrogance should not be in our heart. Look at the Prophet ﷺ, how he was toward the people, toward the children, toward everyone, toward mankind. Prophet ﷺ was very humble with everyone. He was not, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ I have sent you for, for the, for the alameen as mercy, as a mercy for the alameen. And he never, Prophet ﷺ never says, you know, just like, I am this, I am, he always, he was very humble toward everyone. He, even if he sees any child, he will go in his level and talk to him in, in, in his language. And so he will be more comfortable. And that's why, inshallah, if you want to enter Jannah, if we want to enter Jannah, brothers and sisters, please take away from your heart arrogancy and be very careful about people's right because people's right is unforgivable and if you don't ask forgiveness in the dunya of course allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive and then the akhirah those people they will be paying your with your good deeds to those people and those kinds many of them as prophet sallallahu he said that do you guys know who's bankrupt and they said, no, Ya Rasulullah, we do not. The, the, the person maybe didn't have any money left. And they said, no, and Prophet said, this is in the dunya, but not in the akhirah. In the akhirah, the person will come. He has, he has salah, he prayed five times prayer, he has psalm, he has hajj, he has so many other good things. But he was not careful about people's rights. And he has some, he has, he said some bad words, some harsh language to this person, and he shed the, the blood of that person, and he ate the 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 possession, the mal of the, that person, on that, and those all kind of the things that will be paid by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them with, with, their, with their good deeds. And those people, if they do not have enough good deeds, what will happen? And for the, even they, they will get from their bad deeds into their account because of that. And we should be very careful, inshallah, brothers and sisters. And it's very important. We should be away from people's right 
And in the dunya, it is very easy, inshallah, go and ask forgiveness. And they will forgive you or give, repay them. Before you make tawbah, you should try to give people's right. Because otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive you. Do not let everything to the, to the akhirah. And you want to settle your debt in the dunya. And in Sahih Bukhari, in another hadith that Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarantees, guarantees him who strives in his cause and whose motivation for going out is nothing but jihad in his cause and believe in his word and that he will admit him into Jannah. There are so many ways to make jihad, brothers and sisters. Especially the rich, rich people, they can make jihad with their, with their mal, with their money, and with their dollars. And so many, and then especially people, if they have a knowledge, knowledgeable, knowledgeable brothers and sisters, they can make jihad with their knowledge. And so you can give that, that uh, uh, knowledge to the others and spread that knowledge to the other. This is the, another way of the jihad. Has so many ways of the, of the jihad, inshallah. And whoever does that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him enter to the Jannah. And in another hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Sunan uh, Ibn Majah, he said that, oh people, spread the salam. Salam, which is the greetings. Feed the hungry and pray while the people are asleep. You will enter Jannah in peace tadkhulul jannata bi salam spread the salam whenever you see someone say assalamu alaykum wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh you get respond giving salam or the giving or spreading the salam it is sunnah but responding it is obligatory it's fard inshallah we should take it and feed the hungry whether Muslim or non-Muslim, whenever you see someone coming to you and asking you, sir or brother, I am hungry, can you feed me? And do not say what kind of religion you have. Are you Muslim or are you this? No, do not ask those kind of questions. Try to feed that person because you are doing that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Prophet said that pray while the people are asleep. When the people, they are sleeping, Pray Salat at tahajjud And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever you want. And he will give you inshallah. And this is the one of the way you will enter Jannah. And also brothers and sisters, making Umrah is expiation and expiation for the sins committed between it and the previous Umrah. But the reward of the Hajj, hajj Mabrur, nothing but Jannah. So al hajj al mabrur lays al umrah ila al umrah kafarat lima baynahuma wal hajj al mabrur laysa lahu jazaa'un illa al jannah and inshallah try to go to umrah and try to go hajj and do not procrastinate do not delay it. do not say you know next year next year next year whenever you see you have ability to go hajj you are able to go you are healthy and you have enough money to go then you should go to Hajj and finish that because it's once in your lifetime. It's not every year. Once in your lifetime, try to finish that important ibadah, inshallah, before you die. And also, Prophet ﷺ said, whose ever last word are La ilaha illallah, dakhal al jannah, will enter paradise. And inshallah, we should always engage our tongue with La ilaha illallah. And Muhammad, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. Always, inshallah, we should say. And if you see someone, you know, just uh, about to die, or the, try to tell him, say, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. Say, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. So he will be entering Jannah, inshallah. And in another hadith from Jami' al-Tirmizi, Prophet Sallallahu said that if somebody recites the invocation, during the day, this invocation, I'm going to give it to you during the day. And if he should die then, he will be from the people of Jannah. And if he recited in the night, and if he should die on the same day, he will be from the people of the Jannah. What is that dua? Allahumma rab anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani wa ana abduka 
وأنا على أحدك ووعدك ما استطعت أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت وأبوء إليك بنعمتك علي وأعترف بذنوبي فاغفر لي ذنوبي إنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت And this is the one of the important dua for istighfar, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness. They call this in uh, as, as this dua, Sayyid al-Istighfar. The meaning is, Oh Allah, you are my Lord. None has the right to be worshipped except you. You created me and I am your servant and I abide to your covenant and, I, and the promise as best as I can. I take refuge in you from the evil of which I committed. I acknowledge your favor upon me and I acknowledge my sin. So forgive me for verily none can forgive sins except you. And inshallah this is the, the, the way that we can enter Jannah to the, to the paradise inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the straight path, the brothers and sisters. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sins and help us to stay firm on his religion and unite all of us with our family and friends in his Jannah, inshallah. Amin. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.